very good evening to all of you and, uh, and welcome to our Jazz Vespers service. Now, uh, Vespers is, uh, is a time of prayer at the end of the day, and it is, uh, it is a natural time to, to pray after a busy day and all the rest. It's, it, it is going for that still small place and, uh, and taking that opportunity to connect with God and seek out that uh, rest and refreshment that, uh, that we all need. So this is a, this is a really sort of classic time to, uh, to gather for a service. Um, but of course, the jazz part is, uh, is less traditional. Um, but, and in jazz vesters, we tend to be pretty music uh, forward and uh, not a lot of talky talky. Um, and, that's, and that's on purpose because we know God can speak to us in more than words. Um, and, uh, and we've experienced that through the, the wonderful talent that uh, we've already uh, heard this evening. And uh, so I'd like to, uh, to extend our welcome to our musicians the, the tonight. And uh, uh, Paul Schulten on the piano is, uh, is a, a veteran of, the, of Stratford Festival and a veteran of church as well. Uh, he served for many years at, uh, at Zion Lutheran Church, our, uh, our friends down the way there. Um, Larry Larson is, uh, is, the, uh, is our, 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 our trumpeter and uh, he, is, uh, he has also worked for the festival and KW Symphony and all the rest. So um, these are, are extremely, extraordinarily talented folks. Uh, Michael and Dave both have just come off the, uh, the season with, uh, with the Stratford Festival. So, um, and they don't, they don't sound a bit tired at all, which I, I, w I would have expected them to be drooping back there after all those shows. So, uh, so God bless them for, uh, for managing that. But uh, we are just delighted to have all four of you here. Uh, delighted to, to be able to share this evening and this time of prayer with you. So many thanks for being here. And let's give them another round of applause. No, I, said, I did say that this was a, a natural time to pray, so let's do that. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's pray. And there's, uh, you're going to join me in this prayer. It's the Thanksgiving for Light, and it's just on the inside, uh, the first page of your bulletin there. Together we say, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, creator of light and darkness, in this holy season, when the sun's light is swallowed up by the growing darkness of the night, you renew your promise to reveal among us the splendor of your glory, enfleshed and visible to us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Through the prophets, you teach us to hope for his reign of peace. Through the outpouring of his Spirit, you open our blindness to the glory of his presence. Strengthen us in our weakness. Support us in our stumbling efforts to do your will and free our tongues to sing your praise. For to you all honor and blessing are due now and forever. Amen.
Psalm 93, the majesty of God's rule. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring, more majestic than the thunders of mighty waters, more majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
How good is this? Yeah. Mm. So a guy goes in to see the psychiatrist. Oh, don't laugh yet. And the psychiatrist says, where do we start? And the guy said, oh, that's easy, doc. In the beginning, when I created the heavens and the earth, Dave, can you give me a rim shot? In the beginning, when I created the heavens and the earth, thank you. And the psychiatrist said, I know where we need to start. I told that because I thought it was funny. And it got me thinking about time because Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, in the beginning. And I've been thinking about that in terms of time because we're in this time not only this time of our lives, but this time of the year. And it started on Friday. It started on Friday when somebody said to a friend of mine, are you all set for Christmas? I mean, for heaven's sake, it's only November. We're in this time and these shortening days. And I start to think about, as you do, I'm sure, time. And that took me back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And Eugene Peterson, a scholar, has translated the Bible in the vernacular in a very contemporary version. And here's how he translates in his book, The Message. Here's how he translates Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Quote, First, this. God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird over the watery abyss. God spoke light and light appeared. God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day, he named the dark night. It was evening, it was morning, day one." Unquote. Eugene Peterson in The Message. The first thing God created was light. And the first unit of creation is a day, a day. And when you think about it with me just for a few minutes this afternoon, a day is an amazing creation. It's the most precious gift we're given, a day, a day. Each faith tradition marks the day through prayer, through the rhythm of the day, the morning, midday, evening, as we do today, the rising of the sun, the setting of the sun, the rhythm of our activity and our rest, a day. We are invited to receive each day as a gift. We're invited to receive each day as a gift and use it well. Well, you know that the days are organized in weeks and we can thank our Jewish brothers and sisters in our ancestry for the seven day week because the Romans had an eight day week. And it wasn't until 321 that the Emperor Constantine decreed in the year 321 that there would be a seven day week and that Sunday would be the first day of the week. So we have a seven day week. And then the Romans also had 10 months. They started their year in March, March, April, May, June, July, August. This always intrigued me having studied Latin in high school. September then, if you start in March, is the seventh month, sept, 
October is the eighth month, Octo. November is the ninth month, December is the tenth month. I finally figured it out. <laughs> and the Romans, to their credit, ignored winter. <laughs> what a good idea. They had a ten month a 10-month calendar, and then, of course, they had to add January and February to round it out. And so we have this 12-month calendar. So there's the days and the weeks and the months, and then, of course, the yearly cycle. And we organize our time around these units. And we have anniversaries on birthdays and deaths and other celebrations as we mark time. Well, that's my brief history of time. In our Christian calendar, this is the last Sunday of the church year. Next Sunday begins Advent. And so for a little bit of time this year, the Advent secular calendar and the church religious calendar start on the same day next Sunday. And so we mark Advent next Sunday. So this is a year uh, this is the end of the year in the church calendar for us, and it's called the reign of Christ, when we celebrate a sense of completion of this church year, and we look ahead to the beginning of the next year, next Sunday. And we do that a day at a time, because we are invited to receive each day as a gift and use it well. And when we receive each day, each day as a gift, we are more and more aware of the creator of life and love. And we're also aware that there's something bigger. There's something bigger in which we participate. There's something larger, something beyond words, something beyond category. In the psalm, which was appointed for this Sunday's readings in our calendar, which Susan read for us, we find the words, holiness befits your house, O Lord. Holiness befits your house, O Lord. Because we don't have the language, do we? We rely on mystery and beauty and wonder as we encounter holiness. For example, when astronauts return to Earth and are interviewed, they often report an experience of transcendence, of holiness, that there's something about viewing this green jewel from space. There is something about this fragile Earth, our island home, that they glimpse, and it's beyond words, it's beyond category. I wish that the leaders of our world that are at war might be able to glimpse our island home, this beautiful diamond in the universe of our place of living and love. And I wish that we could all just simply get along. For example, when we come into a place like this, at this time of day with candles and community, we are aware of something beyond us. Do you, receive, do you receive a sense of hope and possibility when you come to something like this? Do you, do you sense some worth and value in your very being because you have come to a place where I believe the walls are soaked in prayer and song? Where are your holy places? Where have you been touched by mystery? Where have you encountered the deep energy of love? There have been times when I've been moved by the art in the sacred windows, in the stained glass. There have been times when I've been moved by the light coming through the stained glass. There have been times when there is music that touches me. I'm sure it's true for you too. Music takes us somewhere, someplace beyond words. 
And sometimes it's outdoors, isn't it? One of the gifts of COVID was that we learned to meet outdoors. Do you remember that? We went for walks. Do you remember the porch visits? Do you remember meeting in parking lots? We were outdoors and we discovered that it was good to be outdoors more than maybe usual because that's the only place we could be safely. And each day that we journeyed through that, as we journey through this chapter of our lives, we receive the gift of a day. And when we do that, we open our hearts and our minds, and we realize that the one we call God is far greater than our words and concepts. Jesus was always pointing beyond himself to God's realm, God's kingdom, God's world, and to the unity of all things. And in his teachings and healings and in his very life, he exhibited the deep connection to the source of all love and all life. And so we gather here at this time of the day, this time of the week, this time of the season, and we offer ourselves to God to be, to be nourished and challenged and supported and to be given hope and love and purpose. Thanking God for the first gift, the gift of light and the gift of each day. And there's something about this time of the day that's extra special, especially with music and candles, whether it's a, a church service or whether it's a home with music or a campfire with song. There's something about music at this time of the day that touches us deeply. And that's where jazz comes in and helps us with this connection. Because jazz is about listening and trust and creativity. And one of the gifts of Jazz Vespers is that we can see and participate and witness the very process of improvisation by these musicians. We have front row seats to participate in trust and listening and creativity. And they are finding the freedom of expression within the framework of what's given. Finding their freedom and their voice within the framework of the piece that they are playing. And finding our freedom within the framework of who we are, is that also not the opportunity and the invitation and the call of each day. Trust and listening and creativity in jazz are the building blocks not only of that genre of music, but also of our daily lives and vocation. We're invited to receive each day as a gift and use it well. So, this week, if you don't already, why not try a daily practice of gratitude for the day as it begins? Pausing for a few moments before your day begins to say with the psalmist, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And at the end of the day, commending it to God and letting God look after things while we rest because God rested, and we need to rest and trust God each day that we live and experience love. We are invited to receive each day as a gift and use it well. Amen. Amen. And now, the folks from St. James are going to circulate through the congregation with an offering plate. If you're able to give something to the work of St. James, that would be most appreciative. And we'll hear some more wonderful music.
we come to a few moments of prayer. Duke Ellington said, everyone prays in their own language and there is no language God cannot understand. A friend of mine said, there is so much pain in the world right now, there are no words. I just sit and light a candle. So when I say source of light, I invite you to say, let there be light. Source of light, let there be light. When I say source of light, let there be light. For our world today, Source of love, let there be light. For all those who suffer, Source of love, let there be light. For all communities of hope, healing, compassion, and justice, source of love, let there be light. For all of us that we may lead loving lives and Remembering those who have died and who surround us on every side, remember those who have gone before us. Source of love, let there be light. We gather our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a, a couple of things before we put you to work and get you to sing with us. Um, firstly, I want to, uh, to, to thank uh, Tim for being here and offering his reflection for us. And if you're not aware of it, Tim is actually the brains behind Jazz Vespers. He is the, the man who takes care of everything, he organizes it, and he is an extraordinary human being. We're just very pleased to be able to, uh, to work with him in this way. So let's give him a round of applause. And so the band, they were all right, right? They were in there. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Excellent. Thank you so much.
thank you very much for sharing your time and your talent with us tonight and uh, and for for giving us this wonderful gift of uh, of music it's been uh, it's been absolutely delightful and we're very glad to have it so thank you so much for that um i have another thank you and uh, and that is to uh, veronica and norm who uh, sponsored our Jazz Vespers tonight. Um, it's uh, because of folks like them that we're able to do this and do this well. And so many thanks to, to both of you for your kind donations. Now, Tim mentioned something about uh, Christmas coming. I think it must be a few few days away yet. Um, but uh, next Sunday, you have an opportunity to get out ahead of this game um, with our mistletoe market here at the church. So if you want tortier, though, get here early. They go like that. Um, but anyways, there's lots of other crafts and uh, goodies and all that kind of good stuff. So please come on out next, uh, next Saturday morning for that. Uh, Christmas Day, we do have a, a Christmas dinner here at the church at noon, um, and this is uh, this is this is for folks, uh, not just folks that uh, that need food, but folks that are looking for some company. Um, it's a it's an opportunity not just to, to be fed, but to have a, a time of community and to, and, and Christmas celebration. So, um, if you'd like to join us for that, that would be lovely. And if you'd like to be part of helping out with it, we'd love to have you. And uh, and Tom would be just delighted to uh, to hear from you for that. Our next Jazz Vespers is March 2nd, so just, uh, just before Lent starts, uh, it'll be a Mardi Gras theme, and we'll, uh, we'll have a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, time there with our little band, and Tim will be, instead of preaching, he'll be playing, um, and uh, we're, uh, we're, we'll be looking forward to that very much. All right, now I'm going to turn back over to Tim so he can uh, help us with our, uh, with our hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So we're going to sing the hymn. And you've got the words. Do you have the words in your program? If you don't have a program, it's hymn 532 in the big blue book. 532 if you don't have a program. We're going to sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. We're going to sing first two verses. Then I'm going to go like this. Please sit while these guys improvise on this. And then I'll go like this and we'll sing verse three together. So please stand as they play it over for us and then we'll sing.
Thank you to the Paul Shelton Quartet. <clears throat> Bless you for coming. There's refreshments at the back. Safe home. Thank you.